Hello friends, I welcome you to this chapter Antennas and Micro Engineering. In Unit 1, we have uh, Introduction to Microsystems and Antennas. In this unit, we will discuss today about Introduction of Micro Frequency Bands and Antenna. So first, entering into the topic, we should understand about the chapter that is Antennas and Microwave Engineering. In this course, we have two parts. The one is antenna system and its design. The another one is microwave part. So in microwave part also we have microwave components, microwave frequency classifications and microwave design aspects, right? So in general, in this uh, subject, we have fundamentals of antenna systems, fundamentals of microwaves and different components of antennas, different variety of antennas microwave components are there and the system design also available. So here first we, we should understand about what do you mean by microwave frequency band? What do you mean by microwave? The microwave the term refers split into two words. The one is micro it refers smaller. The other term is wave that refers wavelength. The frequency which is having smaller wavelength that is called as microwave frequency and then antenna. So antenna we know that biological term that is sensors or it is used to feel something right. So from this biological term the same principle will be used in electronic terms. So in this chapter we will discuss about the basic classifications of microwave frequency and what is an antenna and it needs. So these are the today content. First one is evolution of radio waves and electromagnetic spectrum, microwave frequency bands, what is an antenna? Why antennas? That is the need of antennas. Right. And first we will discuss about evolution of radio waves. So we all know about uh, Maxwell's equations, right? And Maxwell framed several equations and those several equations are grouped into four major classifications. In 1873, the Maxwell framed the four major equations that we know already. After the framing the equations, the equations were experimentally proved by the German physicist that is Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz is the German scientist in 1885 to 1889. In this period, he proved all these experimental way, all these way, equations in experimental way. And after invention of uh, the experimental way, the frequency is termed as hertz. Hertz is the unit of frequency. The hertz, the name derived from this uh, German scientist, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz is the father of antenna systems. He is the first person successfully proves all these electromagnetic equations with the help of antenna systems but it's not, it was not commercialized. The entire antenna system was commercialized by the another scientist that is, the name is called as Marconi in 1894 around. He is from Italy. So Marconi is the first scientist. He transmitted the electromagnetic signals in a commercial way, right? So this is a brief history about electromagnetic uh, waves or we simply we can say that it is how uh, the antenna system was developed. So this is the picture, uh, is the picture of uh, Michael Faraday and uh, he is doing some experiment in his lab, right. So now we will discuss about electromagnetic radio spectrums, right. So in this picture, the first part is about the size of reference of the wavelength, okay. So first one is football field, the football field is the very bigger space when we compare with the end it is uh, atomic nucleus it is very small tiny particles so this much space is required for completing one full wavelength whose frequency range is very less okay around 1 megahertz if we convert this 1 megahertz into wavelength in the form of lambda is equal to c by f we have one full cycle will complete within this football field. So it is a bigger size of wavelength, right? 
so this is the complete football ground takes to complete one full cycle of on and off when moving towards this direction the wavelength is will be narrow it is very small but this is the frequency range the frequency range here it is very less so both are inversely proportional if the lambda is increases f will decreases right so lambda is equal to c by f where c is the velocity of light in free space so in free space the velocity of light is equal to velocity of electromagnetic spectrum okay so see here this is the wave whose length is very much longer when we move towards here what is happening the wavelength is very much narrow so during this range whose frequency is very smaller and towards this the frequency range is very high your low frequency and high frequency so we know that uh, during high frequency the wavelength will be very smaller and whose size is very 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 small that is around uh, the size of atomic structure around here the frequency is very small and whose shape is around uh, it's a bigger right it is around football field sometimes and the third part is electron volt so energy level of the corresponding signal and the energy level here it is very less during the low frequency towards this end whose energy level will be high and because of these electron volt that is energy level of such frequency range we are classifying this electromagnetic spectrum into two major parts see here the green color part is completely non ionizing radiations the red, yellow color part is ionizing radiations so according to the biological effect we are classifying the entire spectrum into non ionizing radiations and ionized radiations what do you mean by non ionizing radiations non ionizing radiations does not make any harmful except heating right just it will make surface heating if we use the mobile phone or if we use or if, if our skin is radiated for long time right so under this range of frequency it's just it will induce some surface heating it does not make any more that much harmfulness for any living organs so after this much electron volt see here this much electron volt 10 to 10 power 6 electron volt uh, it becomes ionizing radiations once the radiation penetrates the layers or any living organs what will happen because of this high energy level the ionization happens and because of the ionization it may damage the cell structure of any living organs so sometimes it may damage the dna structure also so this is called as ionizing radiations ionizing radiations whose energy level will be very very greater when we compare with the lower level right and this is the the last one is the usage of such frequency bands right so frequency band can be classified into radio spectrums microwave spectrums and this is the light mediums and this is we have x ray and gamma rays so x ray gamma rays will be used for different uh, purpose for scanning pet cities and other medical purposes and this visible spectrum we have uh, different light energy and other parts and this uh, 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 low frequency of uh, uh, that is terahertz range of frequency which is used for screening purpose and these all from uh, 10 power 5 to 10 power 11 hertz the frequency range is used for multi purpose example for uh, uh, commercial applications uh, communication systems wifi wimax satellite communications micro ovens for cooking and radio communications radar mobile there are a lot of things so all these we are using all these communications nowadays so this is the brief introduction about electromagnetic radiation spectrums so this is the same picture it is in detail right so now we will move on to this uh, clear picture of uh, the frequency range starts from uh, 3 megahertz to 3 gigahertz the spectrum is called as radio waves radio waves are nothing but the signal which starts radiating from the channel or radiating from the conductor that is called as radio waves 
After radio waves, we have microwaves. See the frequency range starts from 3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Within this 3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz, we have lot of classifications of the frequency band. So in the next slide, we will discuss about how we have classified this microwave frequency range. See here starts from the designation L band. The L band starts from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz, whose wavelength is around 15 centimeter to 30 centimeter. And it is used for different uh, purposes. For example, military telemetry, GPS, mobile phone, GSM, amateur radios, all these things. Similarly, we have classified from 3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz with the different bands. The first band is L and second band is S band, 2 to 4 gigahertz. And the third band is C band, it is for long distance radio communications. Whereas in the S band, we are using nowadays for all these applications, right? We are using mobile phone, we are using wireless LAN, Bluetooth, Zigbee, GPS, all other things, right? So all microwave devices, microwave uh, ovens also we are using this frequency range, 2. Point, uh, actually 2.5 gigahertz we are using in microwave ovens. So this S band is nowadays we are using for all the commercial applications. This is very, very important. We are using now for all the commercial mobile, internet, whatever we have. Then we have C band, it is for long distance radio communications. X band frequency is higher than this for C band. We have 8 to 12 gigahertz. Most probably uh, students will be using in the laboratory about these X band frequencies. And the third column is it's completely about the wavelength. You know how to convert from frequency to wavelength, right? And then the micro frequency further classified into KU band, K band, K band, Q, U, V, all these things. <coughs> Sorry. So that's all about micro frequency band and the classifications, right? Now we will come uh, to the point of antennas in biology. So in uh, antenna in biology, how we can term right these antennas? Antennas are our electronic eyes and ears on the world. Okay, our ears and eyes are the sensors. Okay, through that we are receiving some communications, right? So this is the biological terms. So similarly, the antennas are used in several animals to sense or to feel some objects. So according to the part, the animal will change the direction or an animal will work further, right? It will move further. So these are the portions, organs, we can say that this is the biological antenna which is used to sense some particles. According to the signal whatever is received and through these antenna systems here and through this antenna system here, the animal will change the directions or animal will get some information. Similarly, we have antennas in electronics. So we are connected globally through antenna systems. Right. So I am taking class from my my residence and students will be sitting in their own residence. How we all are connected? Through electromagnetic. Not only electromagnetic, electromagnetic through antenna systems. So along with antennas and electromagnetics, we all are interconnected together. Right. So this is the basic fundamental. What do you mean by an antenna? Antenna is nothing but a, it is a conductive material. It is in the form of wire, rod, or any shape, right, which, which excite electromagnetic information. So any shape of metal piece, it can be a wire shape or it can be a circular shape, it can be any kind of shape, it is going to excite electromagnetic signals. So the electromagnetic signals will be the information, right. So the antennas are connecting devices in a free space. It will act as a source for the receiver. It will act as a radiator for the transmitter. Right. Antennas are sensors of electromagnetic waves. Antennas are the transmitter because it converts electrical information into electromagnetic or electromagnetic into electrical information. So this, is, this we can say that it is a transducer. Antennas can match the impedance. Right. Antenna is going to match impedance of free space to this information right we can say it is a impedance matching device antenna is a coupler it is going to couple the information from generator to the free space 
or from free space to the generator. So, we can say it as a coupler, clear. So, antenna is nothing but it is a any shape of metallic piece, metallic rod, metallic wire, it is going to sense electromagnetic signals, clear. So, here I would like to show some uh, examples of antenna systems. See here, these are the antennas are connected as array systems. And this is also some example of antenna systems. And uh, here we have, uh, this is the antenna systems in our uh, nearby place. It, it is located in Chittur. It is one of the division of ISRO India. Uh, the laboratory name is called as NERL, National Atmospheric Research Lab. It is located on the via of Tirupati to Chittur. So, this is the biggest array we have in our country. So, here the each and every element is nothing but an antenna system. It is grouped together, so it becomes an array system, right? And this is another type of biggest antenna in our country, that is ISTRAC project. It is located in Bangalore. And this is another antenna system, GMRT systems, which is located in Pune. And this is the antenna setup in mobile phones, right? In mobile phone, we have lot of applications. So, for lot of applications, we need, um, there are uh, different band of antennas. One is for Wi-Fi applications, and GPS antenna systems, NFC antenna systems, and this is the main antenna systems, right? So, because we are going to access for several applications, so we need <coughs> several antennas in the mobile phones. And what is the need of an antenna? What is the need? where it is used. So, without an what will happen? Suppose, if I communicate within a classroom, right? Within a classroom, if I communicate to the students, we no need of uh, depending any equipment to transfer my information to the students, clear? No need of any equipment. But at the same time, if you want to communicate for long distance students, wireless communication is established, for example. So, how we have to communicate for long distance? We need to go for antenna systems. So, within short duration between, uh, short time between, <coughs> short distance between your uh, transmitter to the receiver part, destination part, we, we no need to go for any system to communicate, right? And see here, if you want to communicate from this area to here or this area to here, okay, right? See this. All these people are interconnected with the help of the antenna systems, right? So, if the distance is longer, we have to go for antennas, clear? Right. And antenna systems are used to connect the people globally. And there's are a lot of applications. Nowadays, we have, we are living with antennas always, you know. Every day we are carrying antennas, right, in the form of mobile phone. Mobile phone, inside the mobile phone, we have antenna systems. So, nowadays, antenna is uh, everywhere, right, in the medical field. See here, in the medical field, uh, the doctor will monitor the patient uh, through their, uh, through the antenna systems. Uh, and 24 hours, we can, it is possible to monitor the patient. Or we can monitor, we can, with the help of other country, we can uh, able to access this, uh, we can use the applications, right? So, from here, we can uh, monitor the patient from London or somewhere else or from London doctor will monitor the patient from India. So, similar way, it is very much useful for uh, wireless health monitoring system is uh, possible because of the antenna systems. And through mobile app, we can monitor the health condition of patient and this is the wireless cardiac pacemaker to simulate the heart functioning, right? So, this is the example of pacemakers. So, antenna nowadays, it is used for uh, several applications. Uh, nowadays, we go for agriculture systems, medical field, traffic systems, or communications. Wherever you go, we have all these systems are connected with antennas. So, in order to establish very good communication. So, these are the pictures which shows that the usage of antennas for different organs, for heart, it is the space makers, and here one pills are fixed, <coughs> sorry, fixed within the brain to simulate the local area, and here the antenna system is fixed in the pancreas, and hearing aids, and here we have for uh, uh, 
improving the eyesight all these parts where antennas are playing a vital role so there are multiple uh, applications nowadays we have so with this we will wind up the today class